The Raspberry Pi 400 is a small desktop computer built into a compact keyboard. It's called a 400, I think, as a nostalgic nod to the Commodore Amiga naming conventions, but specifically 400 because it's based on the same hardware as the Raspberry Pi 4 single board computer. So what if we took a Raspberry Pi Zero and built that into its own keyboard? Would that be a Pi Zero Hundred? I'm going to make one. I'm sure I'm not the first person to do this, and I bet people have even thought of the name Zero Hundred before me. The obvious starting point for this would be the official Raspberry keyboard or something like it. But I'm starting with this small membrane keyboard that I salvaged from a teardown video a while back. This was the keyboard from a kid's hybrid laptop tablet called the Curio Smart. I think this keyboard will be ideal because although it's cheap and it's tiny, it's UK layout and it is, as I discovered in the teardown video, connectable via USB and it has a built-in trackpad. First though, I need to tear it down some more. There's a bit of additional plastic on the top here that I can just pry off with a spudger, but this whole top section, which was part of the docking cradle for the tablet, I just don't need. So first I'll undo the circuit board from the top here, then using clippers and a sharp knife and some brute force, trim away the whole of that top section. It's a bit messy, but this edge will be covered up. My initial plan was to build the lower shell of my Pi 0100 case out of this rigid foam board. I was going to use just two layers of it and cut out holes for all of the components to slot into, then sandwich it all together. I got quite a long way into that idea, but it wasn't quite right, partly because some of the cables and connectors I have just won't fit in two layers of this board. So I ditched that plan and began on a different one. I'll make a sort of hollow, wedge-shaped lower shell that the keyboard will sit on top of. Just really a matter of cutting out all of the pieces, which can be done using a Stanley knife and a bit of patience, and then gluing it all together. I'm adding a small four-port hub because I want to have some external USB ports, but to make this fit inside, I'll remove it from its plastic case. I cut some holes in the back panel for the ends of the cables extending the power input, which is micro USB, and the HDMI output, which is mini HDMI, but my extension cable also converts this to full size HDMI. I cut holes for three of the USB ports in the left hand panel. Only three because I'm going to desolder the fourth USB port and then wire the keyboard into that internally. The keyboard is a bit flimsy, so I also added some support pieces. Then the case just needs to tidy up with sandpaper and it's time to connect everything up. So first, desolder the USB port and solder on a bit of cable to the four pins. This little USB hub also had a socket for an optional separate power supply. I'm taking that off too just because it sticks up and might interfere with other stuff. The other end of that cable can be soldered directly to these pins, which are the back side of the pin connector from the tablet dock. I've already determined which pin is which, but just to test I got it right, I can plug these assembled parts into the computer and just check that the keyboard still works. Next, that cable from the USB hub needs to plug into the Pi Zero, but there's only a micro USB socket for that. So we have two options. One would be to use an adapter like this. The other is just to desolder that cable and replace it with a different one that ends with the right kind of plug. Since adapters take up unnecessary space and I have dozens of old micro USB cables that I can cannibalize for this, I'm gonna solder on a piece cut from a cable. As long as you get the four wires in the right order, it doesn't really matter what the plug on the end looks like. I'm basically converting this ordinary USB hub into an on-the-go hub. During assembly, I discovered I'd made some mistakes. Most notably, I had not allowed sufficient space for all of the ends of the cables. Why do cable ends for USB cables have to be so bulky? I had to sort of fidget and squish around the internals to get them to fit. Plus, I had to move some of those support pieces to different locations. I stuck various bits down with hot glue and then used some super sticky double-sided tape to secure the keyboard to the lower shell. The finishing touch will be some fuzzy adhesive lettering because I had a load of this left over from a project Steph made a long time ago. And also four little non-slip feet on the bottom and we're done. The SD card installed in the Pi Zero contains the 64-bit version of Pi OS which is a little bit hefty for a Pi Zero so I'm not expecting super high performance but it'll probably work fine for the sort of low power applications I have in mind for this machine. My expectations here are quite low. In fact, the whole point for this is to be a very low powered machine that can be left running for various purposes like running a time lapse on a webcam or maybe other kinds of data recording. Anyway, time to boot it up and see what it's like to use. I think it's fair to say that this is not a speedy machine. It takes a couple of minutes to boot up and then a minute or so to launch each application, but that's fine. I probably shouldn't be trying to run a 64 bit OS on this or even a graphical interface at all. But if I change my mind, I can pop the lid and swap out that SD card for a different OS at a later date. So although this project was just really a bit of fun tinkering to repurpose that old keyboard, I do have a plan to use this machine. Its key utility is it's all in one. So I can just plug it into my main monitor and switch the input. It's kind of handy to have the mouse and keyboard peripherals all integrated like this. 
Anyway, there it is for now. This is the Raspberry Pi 0-100. I hope this was interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.